reports. Let's talk about the navigation and functionality of CalPads reports. So here we have the CalPads test environment. And that way, if we show any student data, it's all fictitious. Unfortunately, you can see that my password is about to expire in 10 days. And so basically, you're looking at the CalPads home screen. You see welcome. And for most reports, you can access them directly using the left navigation and the reports menu. If you hide the left navigation, you won't see it. So you want to make sure that you bring up the left navigation. You expand the drop down, and you can see the different type of reports. You can see that we have ODS reports. These display data representing what's in the actual CalPads operational data store. We have, we have snapshot reports, which displays data representing the snapshot revision at, for a specific data collection. So snapshot reports have business rules that either look at the entire academic year or a specific day, like census day, or in the case of the cumulative enrollment uh, snapshot report, it can uh, be filtered to look longer than the entire academic year. It can go back into the previous year. So snapshot reports have business rules that dictate the view. Then you have county and authorizing LEA reports. These reports provide access to LEA level data to counties or access to IRCs, which are treated as LEAs, to those authorizers. So a district that's authorizing independent reporting charter school will have access to view the data. And then accountability and monitoring reports. Accountability and monitoring reports help LEAs reconcile graduate and special education data within and outside of submission windows. And then, of course, we have further versions of some of these reports. So let's start with snapshot reports, as most people are going to be interested in those. All right, so we have snapshot reports. And despite this date and time stamp, you don't have to pay much attention to it. The snapshot reports are generated every time you get a new revision. So with each revision for a particular snapshot, if it's in the snapshot window, if it's in the data submission window, you can have a new set of reports. And so we'll, we'll give you an example of that here shortly. But just to talk about this landing page, you have your supplemental reports, which uh, assist you in identifying information about the snapshot, not specific to data that you've submitted, but information about the snapshot. So. Report 1.0 is a certification error report. For every submission, you can pull up a certification error report. Larger districts, or if you have many errors, may find this as a useful tool as opposed to using the CalPage user interface to reconcile data. And so you will have a list of errors for fall one, fall two, end of year one, so on and so forth. And then your expected schools information report tells you which schools you must submit data for. And so just a quick example for fall one, all schools that are active are required to submit data. In addition to those high schools that had an enrollment the previous years must submit or certify the data. And so that would be detailed in the expected schools information report. Whereas fall two would only be active schools. So it doesn't matter if you had a student enrollment last year for fall two, schools wouldn't be listed. So you could find, or you know, even a clearer example, what would be uh, end of year one, where you're only looking for data for secondary level schools, not elementary schools. And so your expected schools information report is 1.08. Then you have your fall one reports, and we'll give you an example of a couple of these, and they're listed here. And then you have your fall two, so they're organized by snapshot. Now, spring is listed for historical purposes, but as you can see, spring hasn't been collected since 2014. And then you have your end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, end of year four. And so these are your snapshot reports. And if CalPads grows and includes a new snapshot, the reports will be listed here, right? So these are a co complete collection of reports that are on the certification module, and we'll show you that later, both aggregate and supporting reports. Okay, so let's just start with 1.1. .1. 
And you, so you can see the name or you can see the number here, right? 1.1. And then the name is also a link. And so we can click the link to get to the report. All right, so here we have report 1.1 again, enrollment, primary and short term enrollment count by subgroup, okay? And what we have here are the filters available to us. So prior to running the report, we want to make sure that the filter criteria will render the results we expect. So right here, you can see 22, 23 academic year. If I want to look at historical information, I can go to 21, 22. And so let's try to do that. And you can see it takes time to go to the different year. Um, and then you have a collection of available statuses. So we may have a revised and certified status, an LEA approved status, a SELPA approved status, LEA disapproved or a SELPA disapproved status, in review status. So all the different certification statuses are available. So that's something else you want to consider when you're looking at your reports. And then, of course, self-explanatory is grade level, ethnicity, race, age eligibility for certain reports, school type. So let's go over school type. You can see the different filters, continuation schools, high schools, intermediate, elementary, so on and so forth. Other data elements that are associated to enrollments. You can see age with adult age students with disabilities in transition. So part of the student enrollment uh, module has this indicator. You can click it on yes or no. So you have this filter criteria that helps you look for specific students. A lot of times, if you have a problem in your reports and the data is reported correctly, you want to check your filters and make sure that all the default settings are set. Sometimes I notice that for whatever reason, some of the reports may have uh, a default, you know, some of the criteria not select. And so you want to, you know, check your, your filter criteria. Okay. And so once, you know, all the filter criteria is set and this is a snapshot report. So most of the time you don't want to touch the filter criteria because you're trying to see the report as it's intended, the report as the state is going to use it. So you click view report, and it'll take a few minutes uh, to render results. So you just have to be patient. And so when the report renders, you can see at the bottom half beneath the filters is a view of the report in the UI. And, you know, this is test data, a fake district. So we only have three schools. Often the report may not render solely within this viewing module. And so you can see there's different pages. There's a scroll bar at the right for vertical scrolling and a scroll bar at the a bottom for horizontal scrolling. Extensive reports have to be scrolled, right? So because of this, even though the report supported in the UI, it's not the easiest way to view the data. So let's talk about some additional functionality here. You can see that we have pages. So a report with a lot of data you can scroll through the different pages. Then you can refresh or go back in that in that page scrolling. You can enlarge the view of the report or minimize it. Generally, as we age, you know, our eyesight tends to need a little help. And you can print the report, right? So you can print the report in this tabular format, right, as a table. Just as it's viewed here, you could print it. And then you have a search. If I was looking for a student or a school, I can do a search. So let's type in Emerson, click find. And so you can see it looks for characters or a string within that. Just like a control F in any document or website, it's going to look for that. You can look for numbers. So if you have a student SSID that you wanted to look for, or a staff seed, you can do that. And so that's the search function. So let's go back. I skipped over this little floppy disk. This is your export or download options. And so you can see there are various formats of 
export and download, right? You can export it as a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet. So when you have a quite lengthy report that you want to see in tabular format, you can download it in Excel. So I'll do that. And you can see it's downloading here. Or you can download it as a PDF or a .csv if that's what you want to do, an XML file. So, you know, just to, to give you a variation, I'll do PowerPoint. I've never done PowerPoint before. Okay, so we have our two downloaded versions. Let's first go to this Excel version. So it's gonna open up in Excel, which it has. And you can see it's in the same format. I may have to adjust some of the rows and columns to make it easier to view or expand it. So here we are, right? Here's the report. Even in the footer, I have to expand, you know, the columns and rows to make sure that I can view it. And so if there was thousands of records, exporting into Excel would obviously be what I would want to do, right? And so I prefer um, the Excel. That's what I find most practical for how I use it. So, you know, just an example of the exporting options. Now, we have links here. Before we use the links, let's talk about the other elements in the report. So the report's divided into three general sections, right? You have a header, this information at the top. Then you have this table format in the middle. And then you have this footer at the bottom. So in the header, we have the title of the report and information of our filter criteria. So you can see the academic year selected, the view, which is, you know, the snapshot, or if it was uh, this particular report is also available as an ODS report. You have the revision ID. This helps me track this data in this report to the specific snapshot revision. So we have the revision ID. The LEA for, for which the data is related. The school type, all, we didn't filter school type or schools. They both say all. The user ID, so the person who's extracted the report, that'd be me. The revision date of the report. So in addition to the revision ID, the revision date helps you keep track of data and the revision. And then the print date, just how relevant this report is or how recent it was extracted or printed, okay? That's the header. Now in the table, the report is formatted, as we mentioned in the overview. So all of these columns, regardless of your filter criteria, are going to be uh, featured in the report every time. As you can see, students with disabilities, we have zero counts as well as Title C migrant. So the report cannot be customized. If, even if I know going in, I, I don't have this data set. Even if I have, I know I have no students that are Title I Part C migrant or those students with disabilities, the report is going to come out with all of these columns and show these counts. So the report can be filtered, but it's not customizable. Then after the headers of the table, we have the data within, right? And so you can see for this report, it's numeric data, which are the enrollment counts, except for the school name, which is not just the title or the school name. You can see that it's blue. And so these links link us to different versions of this report or possibly other reports with more specific data. So we'll demonstrate that last. And then we have the filter criteria again at the bottom. So grade level, all the grades, student transfer codes, all of them, age eligibility is not. So that's what you see here at the bottom. So um, when you're looking at your counts, you can easily refer back to the footer to see if you selected any filter criteria. So uh, let's try some of these links. So I'm, I'm right-clicking this because I don't want to lose this particular screen. I can just left-click it and go directly, but I'm opening a separate tab. So we'll click the Title III uh, immigrant link, and then I'm going to click school name and open in a new tab. So we'll just wait for those reports to render and then go to those screens. As you uh, can see, CalPads has done one. And so you see report filters here. And if you remember, this is the Title III eligible immigrant link, right? 
And again, if I would have to do my filter criteria, you know, I'll just leave it as is. Click view report. And then this next link, I believe, was we click the link for Emerson Elementary. So let's click view report as well. Okay, so we uh, clicked the link for CSIS training Emerson Elementary. And that brought us to report 1.2. And I had to click view the report. When, when you click view the report, well, first of all, when you click the link, it's already filtered. You can see for Emerson Elementary because I picked that school. And then I ran it. And so it renders the results. And one thing about filtering in that way, the reports take less time because it's a smaller data set. I picked a specific school rather than the entire LEA. So that's something to think about, even if you're going to run the report initially. If I wanted to just look at the enrollment count for a single school, you know, I could filter that before I run it. And it, it takes that rendering down from several minutes to just a few minutes. So that's something to think about. And of course, these are all fake students. We're just creative with the names. And then you can see with report 1.2 that it's similar but more detailed to report 1.1. And so the title of report 1.2 is enrollment, primary short-term enrollment student list. It's a fall one report. We talk about this report in that training. But I just want to show you that these reports have relationships. The supporting reports are structured similar to those aggregate reports. And so you, from the report module, if you look at the name, you can see the association. And then you can see more detailed information that was provided in the count. But primarily, you see that it's a student list, and this data is relevant to the student's record, whereas report 1.1 was just a count. And so we're looking at the nine students at Emerson Elementary. And then we also click Title III Eligible Immigrants. That would be this report. And you see it took us to the report, Title III Eligible Immigrants Count by Birth Country. And we just click view the report. And I don't think we had any counts. I think I just wanted to show you the functionality here. Yeah, there is no counts, right? So there's not going to be a more detailed version of the report. But it does show you that the reports are not customizable. Despite being no data, and we know that there's, or we expect it to be no data, the report's still going to render. And what you have is a count of zero. You see total selected schools was one, right? There's one school and there's zero counts. Oh, Argentina, we have one. At Emerson Elementary, we have one. Oh, different academic years. This is a 21-22 year. And so that's something uh, not intended, but to be careful of. This is 22-23. So we clicked the report and it brought us to the landing page. I didn't uh, filter correctly, right? I didn't make sure that it was a 21-22 report. So that's something else to be aware of. Again, that's the value of, of the information in the header. So that little discrepancy, which if I had hair, I could have been pulling my hair out, uh, was easily resolved. Just there's a specific flow to the training. And we'll talk about the user manual extensively here. But also, you know, if you're looking at a report and you don't know how the links work, you can come to uh, the report mapping guides, which we have a whole section dedicated to this. So if you go to the end of this training or skip through to that section, we'll cover this. But in this table, you can see a description of the links. So we'll come back to that later, I'm sure. Just you know, throw that out there while we're talking about the links. So speaking of snapshot reports, there's additional navigation, right? And so when we talk about the snapshot and we have whole trainings dedicated to this outside the realm of reports, a snapshot report is reflective of the certification status. And so what we do in CalPads, we submit data and we certify that our counts are accurate representation of the data we submitted. So as part of certifying, you have to uh, review reports, right? And so there's a way to get to those fall one reports 
you see sir i went to certification status and then fall one enrollment because i'm looking at fall one reports and at the time of this recording the fall one snapshot and the fall two snapshot are running concurrently and so here you have uh the landing page the certification details and if i scroll down here are those same reports that were listed in their fall one they're divided as far as aggregate reports and for the purpose of certification users must review every one of these aggregate reports prior to certifying but the details the student lists the the detailed reports that are on the report screen are also listed here as well and when you look at the report you can see a revision id so here you have the revision id and in your snapshot history as well as the create date that is also on the report and then again at the top of the screen when you're using your reports you have a revision id and a create date and then you have your different statuses so um, when you're looking at your different reports uh, let's say 1.1 again Okay, and so the snapshot took us right to the report relevant to that snapshot, right? We took a little bit of time to wait. It rendered automatically. I didn't have to hit view report. Once it's viewed, I can change it, right? I could, if we had multiple statuses. So it's the same report. Snapshot report is a certification report. Just different purposes and ways to get there. And so the previous example, of course, was... 21 22 academic year this the reason why the totals are different is this is the 22 23 academic year and then you can see that one student that one title three eligible immigrant student so if i would have clicked this link we would have went to the previous uh, 2.2 title three eligible immigrant report so that's pretty much the functionality to snapshot reports Again, the certification side of this is in a different training, but the report functionality is the same. Okay, let's go to ODS reports now. So we started with snapshot. Now we're moving on to ODS reports. And so it looks very similar, right? Uh, one thing, though, is this is significant as far as ODS reports. ODS reports only run nightly. So the changes you make today would not be reflected in your ODS reports until they process overnight. So if you think of ODS reports as always being a day behind, unless you have a day where you don't submit data, right? If you come in on Monday and you check your ODS reports, they probably most accurate at that time. There is not an ODS report for every snapshot report. Some of the, the newer snapshot reports I do believe exists without an ODS uh, accompanying report. So as you can see, uh, end of year four does not exist. End of year three, we do not have the list of those reports. So that's one thing to note. Also, there's not a snapshot version for every ODS report. So you have 12.1 anomaly status, concurrent uh, enrollment, your CCE report, your ERD report, exit reason discrepancy, your two different versions of your mid reports. These are only ODS reports as well. Your foster youth, right? The count of your foster youth students and the list of those students are only available as ODS reports. So that's something else worth pointing out at this time. All right, but a lot of these reports are the same and they're going to function exactly the same. So we'll go real quickly through these ODS reports as far as 1.1. And so you can see the same functionality. I'm going to click view report. And so here you have 1.1 enrollment status primary uh, by subgroup 2223. And if you if you notice, there's a different in our counts. And so while the behavior and functionality is very similar between ODS reports and snapshot reports, the business rules behind them are a little bit different or the processing rules. Snapshot reports are subject to business rules like certification errors, 
students with missing data certification errors don't show up on snapshot reports. So if you have a CERT 004 missing race ethnicity, they're not going to show up in your counts. But as you can see, we have almost double the number of students. And so if this was the certification training, I would show you to account for these students in the ODS report, I would look for those errors on the certification screen. You know, the general point here is, although you can expect the same structure of reports, the same filter between ODS and snapshot, counts sometimes are different because there's different business rules and, and more probably more importantly, processing rules. So again, ODS reports are only processed overnight and they're not subject to certification errors or those business rules that exclude data due to certification errors. They just show you the data that's in the ODS. So we have 28 students. The snapshot version showed, I think, 15. There's 13 students that have errors that exclude them from the snapshot version of this report. And so that's one of the values of the ODS reports. Also, snapshots look generally at school-age students. So a lot of reports looking at students that are in KN, where the ODS report looks at all grade levels. So you see we have toddlers and preschool, infant. So they may not be included in some of those other reports or the counts. So that's something else to be aware of. Uh, the criteria is a bit different in how ODS and snapshot reports uh, process and render. So again, that's why you, if you're going to use an ODS report and try to reconcile a snapshot report, you want to set your filter criteria to mirror that of the snapshot report. Let's look at some of the more unique ODS reports real quickly and then move on to the county reports. So anomaly status, I'm going to right-click that, put it in a new tab, and CCE. And then let's, because we use fictitious data and foster youth is generated from a match, we're not going to have foster youth students. So there's not going to be a good representation of data, but I just want to show you what a report would look like. So your anomaly status, right? You see, we have some bad data. We have a lot of anomalies. But the 12.1 anomaly status will tell you your anomalies, your mids, your CCEs, and your ERDs, and then your anomaly percentage. And a description of what's calculated is, is here. So again, if you're unfamiliar with this particular report, your anomaly percentage of 3.49% is pretty much a combination of three divided by one. So your mids divided by your mid enrollment times 0.5, and then your anomaly percentage, or your, your other half is your CCEs, your column four, divided by column two, your CC enrollment, and then times 0.5, and then, you know, 3.49% is what has come up. So we couldn't certify because the threshold is less than two, again, different training, but just to show you how the reports are useful and provide information, right? So this is a description of how the report is calculated here. One thing you also want to pay attention to is in this calculation, you can see ERDs do not count towards your anomaly percentage at all. Just column four and column three divided by one and two or two and one, however. So that's something to take note of when you're using the reports. So we have no schools selected here. That's something to be aware of. Now we've selected schools and we're going to render the report, see if anything comes up. This is our CCE report. And then just because I don't want to get short on time, we'll click view report and see what happens. So here's our list of CCE and we have Ketchup and Channel Islands or however you want to say these names. And it, it you know, it provides us enrollment information, student information. We can do a little bit of an analysis with our CCEs. If we're not the one who has to resolve this data in their local system, the report can be downloaded, right? And, and given to someone to work at the local level. You can see primary contact information for other LEAs. So we know how to fix this is listed. So 
all that is useful in this particular report. And then, you know, we have our FOSHA youth report. And so uh, while we have reports, snapshot reports, 1.17 and 1.18 that provide information on FOSHA students, it's reflective of the snapshot. If you want to find information on FOSHA youth students enrolled now, or students that are enrolled now that used to be FOSHA youth, you would want to look at the collection of FOSHA youth reports 5.6 to 5.9. We don't have any, of course, but again, this is just an example of how the reports have a consistent structure. Regardless of result, the report is the report. It's not going to be changed. If we have nothing, no counts or no data, it's just going to say zero. Let's go to county authorizing LEA reports. So again, you have uh, some filter criteria at the top, your uh, academic year. And then you have your different titles of the types of reports. So the counties and authorizing LEAs have views of the different snapshot reports, as well as, you know, a specific accountability report. So the cohort report they have a view of. And then again, at the top, supplemental reports. So sensitive data being foster youth students. So they have views of the ODS reports, foster youth data, and then staff teaching, right? Because your CalSAS monitoring authority is often the county. They have view of what you reported for staff. And so let's run 1.1. It's pretty consistent and takes a little time to render, but all right. So here's the 1.1. And again, we have some blanks here. And so when we talked about report types, remember we described the county and authorizing agencies have access to data. So I would need to have a county account, you know, not CSIS Training Berkeley. Or CSIS Training Berkeley would have to be the authorizer of an IRC, which we don't in this test environment. So through the, uh, we're going to run this report, or we're going to uh, make a great effort to run this report, but through the, the miracle of editing, we're going to change my roles and privileges that will give me access to this report. So, you know, in the blink of an eye or right before your eyes, things will change. And so uh, if you are, if you have a, an account for a county office, or if you are at a, a district that authorizes independently reporting charter schools, you may have access to your county authorizing uh, agency reports. So this is what it would look like. You know, it would look like this. So if I was uh, at Sacramento County COE, the county is identified. And what's different is... I have a list of all the different LEAs within my county. So if you think about the LEA level reports, you can filter for school for these county authorizing agency reports. You have additional filters. And so the functionality is just the same. You know, I click view report after my filter criteria is selected. And unfortunately, there is no data. All right, so why do we have no data? All right, it's, it's not our roles. It's not the access, All right? So again, just to refer to the user manual, which we'll talk about extensively later on, we'd, we'd look up this report. We'll show you how to do it. And then you go to the 1.1. This is the county CA 1.1. And in the basic selection criteria, you can see only LEAs who have certified their data are displayed in the county reports, right? And so in tests, nothing certified. It's just a test environment, right? We just need data to play with to either implement new functionality or to improve functionality or in some small instances, repair functionality in CalPads, right? So what we did is I went to production, but we have a report here uh, that doesn't have any 
student identifying information. So it's the CA 1.1, and it's the, a version of the report 1.1, but the county has view of every school or every, not every school, but every LEA in the county. So it's an LEA level report, right? The county can see the totals for every LEA. And so, um, you know, there's several reports that the county or authorizing agency, if you're a school district and you have multiple IRCs, you have a version of this report as well. Similar functionality with filter criteria, the exporting of the report and what have you is just that if you're a county office user or if you are a district user and you're looking at your IRCs, they have to be certified. So you see that there's no status, no revision status here because they have to be in a certified status for you to have access to this data. You know, that's your county authorizing LEA reports. Let's go to the SELPA reports next. And so I kind of uh, prep that for us. You know, SELPAs have a list of reports. Uh, let's do it from here. SELPA reports. So, you know, the SELPAs see reports that are relevant to students with disabilities. So you have fall one, end of year three, end of year four, as well as the monitoring reports. One such report is 16.1. Mostly it's not about the data or the totals. It's the functionality. And you can see SELPAs have similar functionality to LEAs. That's similar to counties. LEAs or SELPAs have access to all LEAs under their peer view. So you can see it says LEA name. Had we had data, you would see a list of districts information down the report. Let's do revise on certified and see if we generate anything. And just being in the test environment, the data sets are a little bit unpredictable sometimes. So here, here's a better example. You can see LEA name. So these are the different school districts and IRCs or possibly even county offices or different LEAs. And then totals if there are any in the columns uh, to the right. Similar to 16.1 in your snapshot uh, reports, you know, similar structure just tells us the LEA. It tells us the revision ID. So we're looking at revised uncertified. So if the SELPA is looking at a specific revision and there's some discourse or between SELPA and the LEA, um, we can find out the discrepancy based on the revision ID and the revision date. We went to SELPA reports, then we have accountability and monitoring reports, right? And so again, we have reports about the cohort, for your cohort, uh, the, the, the graduation results or those students who do not graduate, right? So our, our, our outcomes after four years for our students. And then we have monitoring reports. And these help LEAs monitor the students with disabilities to make sure they're having their meetings and that those meetings and services are appropriate for the students. This is something that must be done continuously. So the monitoring reports are ODS reports that uh, run nightly and they can be used throughout the year. They're not subject to a submission window. So that's why they're not tied to a snapshot, right? Uh, so you have your accountability and monitoring reports. And so uh, this is 15.1 cohort counts and rates. And so you see cohort expected graduation year. That's a little bit different, right? So you're looking into the future for students that are enrolled now or uh, into the past, right? So that's a unique thing uh, within the cohort report and the different filters. And so, you know, the, the filters are unique to the cohort set of data, but they're the same as you would see in any other report and they function the same. And while we wait for this to render, we'll prep the monitoring report. 
And so again, you go back to the academic year, it's a common academic year. You have an as of day being an ODS report. Uh, what are we looking as of? And we'll run this report. Select all schools. So our cohort report has rendered. And it looks like no one graduated, right? Again, this is uh, the test environment. So we didn't exit students that would have graduated or we don't have students in the, this particular cohort. I can't generally explain the data, but you can see that we have a header in the report. You have your table format. Uh, and within the table, you can see the columns have a, a header, right? And then you can see the footer that had our selection criteria. So if we were trying to see why we had a 0% GD completer rate, we can look to see if we filtered out specific schools or what have you. But generally, uh, and we have training dedicated to the cohort. So, you know, if you want more information on this particular report or the data that goes into this report, please go to that training and then go back to the monitoring report. You know, this is our students with disability monitoring counts. We have a training for students with disabilities where we talk about the monitoring reports. The thing I want to report, you know, everything's still the same, still consistent. Filters, the report structure, all that. You know, a couple of things I want to talk about here is you see in the footer, there's a description uh, here. It says demographic data based on CalPAD source may not be consistent with local special education systems, right? And so, you know, the demographic data for our students with disability comes from the student information system, whereas the special education data for our students with disability comes from the SEDS. And if those two systems aren't in alignment, there could be a discrepancy. So what you see on this report. So, you know, those disclaimers are also going to be here in the report. So it's important, you know, not just to look at the table, but any notes associated with the table. Uh, again, sometimes it describes how the counts are calculated. And then the other thing is with the monitoring counts is just real quickly coming back to the user manual. And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I think it's appropriate as we look at the monitoring reports to come over here and we get a lot of questions, right? And so you want to look at the description and it will tell you what to expect as well as the selected students. The report here, just this sentence, says it reports the total number of students age 16, 22 with the active IEP and those students with or without transition goals. So you're using this report and you're looking at the category, the monitor touring category your student may be in. You can see it says late plan review meeting, late eligibility meeting, so on and so forth. And th that's how this report is used. LEAs look to see if there's late data or late meetings or missing data in these reports, right? Missing transition goals. The problem is LEAs don't understand that all the students are going to be listed on this report. They may not be late, they may not be missing anything. However, if they are, they're going to be in one of the buckets that says a late meeting or uh, missing transition goals. But even if they're not missing anything, they will be listed on the report. And 16.8 in particular, not necessarily 16.7. So, you know, you want to refer to the data guide when you're looking at your counts or your list of students and they're not making sense. But that's generally the report functionality that you want to use those informational tools to really get value out of your reports. And we'll 